I was brought up on a um, pit estate, mining estate. We had, um, um, relative to now, poor financially. Um, there were never any paper in the house, never any pencils in the house. Um, I used to draw on newspapers and scraps of paper and still do. My brother and sister and myself used to fight over a scrap of paper or a, a an odd end of a roll, paper, um, roll of wallpaper to draw on because we were all avid drawers. Um, I was the only one that really kept it up though. Your most iconic work is your series of mining paintings. What other mediums do you work in? Oh, I try all sorts of mediums. Everything. Yeah. Any medium that you can make a mark with. I've, I've used, I will use, do use. Oh, yeah. uh, I do um, etching, I do printmaking, I do all sorts of any material that you lay your hands on, basically, that you can make a, a mark with or make a model with. Anybody who likes art or, or who collects art in the north um, knows Harry Malkin. He's a very important painter. He can paint, he has real draftsmanship, um, and he can tell a story. So from a gallerist's point of view, it was a no-brainer. As soon as we saw his work, and as soon, as soon as we saw a slot coming up in the calendar, we thought, let's fill our place with Harry Malkin's work. It's a great um, idea for a solo show because it's so theatrical and the work really connects. You tend to focus on people, not always faces, no, definitely people. Definitely people. I'm a figurative person. I like um, studying people and whatever. I think people are more interesting than places are background, as it were, that people uh, are the focus for me. I draw continuously. I draw, sketch. Um, no, I think ideas are some the fleeting. A lot of time I start off um, where he used to work. Um, so that's the basis of where my work started, yeah. thinking about um, what he used to do, um, mining. The mining communities that were um, dotted around this area and the pits were their lifeline and uh, basically it run everything socially, um, financially. Most of the shops and most of the, um, most of the things around this area would have been relying on the pits. I mean I spent, um, how old are you? 21, I spent nearly a lifetime underground. I think the world of mining is a diminishing world in that often people really have no idea what that world involves. The idea of going over one mile underground beneath the, wa beneath the North Sea up to your chest in freezing black water with your life depending on five or six teammates, that's a horrifying idea. Harry's done that, he's been there, he's experienced it and like Kyle says his intuition for that life manifests itself beautifully in his paintings. So I think people like the work because it's authentic. You can't fake that type of experience. He's been there. He learned to draw on the sweat and grime of his dad's back when his dad came back from the mines. You know, that's not a middle-class bourgeois art student who decides to pick up a pencil and gets down with the kids. This is the real deal. He's died in the wool miner. Our pit started closing in um, 1985, that was seven months after the strike. 
I think I was one of the first to close after the strike. And subsequently there were pits that were closing um, within months regular after that. Um, so by 1989-90 I think a lot of them had shut. Um, we're no longer a mining um, country. Um, we're no longer... When you think back to when I was born, everywhere were coal fired. Everywhere were coal mines. We'd be surrounded by coal mines. Um, Wakefield, of which I did a, a little installation for wait, um, an exhibition end, um, which is pits of Wakefield area. Um, and this is a silhouette of Wakefield district. You could do another one of Barnsley next door, um, surrounded by pits. Now this is what were left in just before the strike, 1984. If I'd have done the same in when I started, which I wanted to develop in 1966, there would have been another 10 or 15 mines there. You know, so gradually there's been a, a decrease in my lifetime, but all of a sudden it went finished. Children nowadays, children, adults nowadays, that's never seen a lump of coal, don't know what coal is, don't know what um, created this country, the wealth of this country. Um, without it, there would have been no heavy industry, no, um, none of the industry that we had. It's interesting to, to see how it's, um, how the country's developed, I suppose. Um, I'm doing, at the moment, I'm doing a residence in a power station at uh, Immingham, um, a gas-fired power station. And it's interesting looking at the, how the work has developed, how the, um, I'm basically here at um, Well Turn 60, and there's guys in the power station, engineers and fitters, that are my age. And you think, where are the youth? And they're into it. The pit closed and I spent 12 months, um, another 12 months, buggering about basically. And consciously after that 12 months, I got a job on a, um, a job scheme project, illustrating art, artefacts at um, Pontefract Castle. Um, and during that period, I'd, um, I got a, a portfolio of work together. And um, as that job finished, um, I'd got an exhibition at Royal, Royal Festival Hall um, with the artwork. And I think once I, um, once I finished with the mines, um, physically, I'd still got a mental image of them. I'd still got um, ideas. And, um, and basically, I, um, I drew on that and found out that there was interest there and money there, um, both of which interested me. We launched Harry Malkin's exhibition on a Friday night and the place was packed. We sold a lot. Um, people came from all over the UK. Um, his name really connects and translates very well and his paintings are timeless. So in terms of popularity, the footfall was superb. The, the sales were great. We made pre-exhibition sales, which is the best thing any gallery could say. We were delighted. It was one of, one of the highlights of 2011. Do you think that always referring back to the past in your work, you, you do reference mining quite a lot. Do you think that's sort of detrimental to your development? Um, I see it as development to the artwork. It's not just a matter of... The subject matter is somewhat that's true to me. <coughs> and basically what I'm doing is developing the art side of it. Um, when you look at a lot of the late and greats, a lot of us reflect back to Henry Moore. Uh, when you look at his, his work, it were developments of basically about five subject matters, um, which reflect all through his life. And a lot of artists will pick a, um, will pick a subject and basically that's them for all their life because then you, you pick up a piece of artwork of theirs and you know it's theirs because of the subject matter. Um, yeah, a lot of the late and greats, when you look at them, they, 
Um, Anthony Gormley, if you look at his artwork, it's basically him. You know, Angel at North is him with a pair of wings on. The, um, the figures down at the, um, on the beach at Morecambe Bay, it's him. Um, everything is a development, is a cast of him, as it were. So it's a very, you would, would you say it's something you're very passionate about or something to sort of to pay the bills at the end of the day? Um, both. Yeah, I'm very passionate about paying bills at the end of the day, but um, yeah, it's more than that. Um, obviously, if I um, yeah, if I wanted to make money, it's easy to it's easy to do. Um, you make a production line and off you go. Um, but it's a bit more interesting than that. There's lots of different turns and everything that um, that makes life interesting, I suppose. Would you be able to sort of describe some of the things that make it interesting for you? A uh, different challenge every day, yeah. Um, I found that with, um, with mining, is that you had a different challenge every day. Um, some people thought that you went, and, you went in a hole every day and it was the same mundane job every day. It wasn't, it was a different challenge every day. And art is the same, it's a different challenge. Unless, you're, unless you want to make a production line and then it's, it's a mundane sit down, blood, as it were. Um, so yeah, it's, it makes life interesting. Mm. We all know Harry Malcolm. I mean, obviously, you know, he knows his stuff. He really um, connects with his subject um, simply because he was a miner himself. Visually, I mean, it is dark stuff. It's, um, you know, the carrier skew is there, the depth, the, heart, the light. Um, it's just wonderful. So he's a real character. <laughs> so, yeah. He's got it's some... good fun to be around, and he's got some wonderful stories to tell. And he's a real gentleman. Very a, much. So, a very yeah. much died in the world gent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think you know that's not because he's a hard-working guy or he's a northerner. I think the fact is um, he knows what hard work is, and he knows what having a, a difficult story is. But he's a sensitive guy, and he's always yearning and striving to capture what he feels and sees into a painting. And it's that yearning for artistic meaning that I think really sets him aside from anybody else. As far as we're concerned, he's the most important ex minor painter in the UK. And I know that's a real claim, but this is Harry Malkin we're talking about. He's the real deal.